BTEC Applied Science and this video is for Unit 16 which is astronomy which is what my students do. Uh, this video is about sundials, some information about sundials, what they are and how they work. Now a sundial, if I put a stick in the ground, if I put a vertical stick in the ground then it makes a shadow and as the sun appears to move throughout the day then the shadow will move. Now the sun appears to move throughout the day it, it, it doesn't very much it's because the earth is rotating so as the earth rotates then the shadow will move. We say that the sun rises in the east uh, and then in the morning the, sh the sun gets higher in the sky and the shadow will get shorter and shorter the sun will culminate, it'll be at its highest around midday and then the sun goes down uh, and the shadows get longer and longer again and then the sun sets in the west. Can we use the position of the shadow to tell what time it is? And you could but it wouldn't be a very accurate way of doing it and there's a few reasons why and that's basically what I'm going to talk about now. How do you get from a, a shadow stick to a sundial, which tells you something like the accurate time? Now, things are, are complicated basically because the Earth spins on a tilted axis. The Earth spins around about in 24 hours. It, takes, it actually takes a little bit less than 24 hours for the Earth to spin around on its axis but this axis is tilted 23.5 degrees, okay? If the Earth's axis wasn't tilted, imagine it didn't spin on a tilted axis and also imagine you lived at the North Pole, okay? If you lived at the North Pole, your latitude would be 90 degrees. You'd be 90 degrees above the equator and if you lived at the North Pole, and you put a stick in the ground, then the length of the shadow wouldn't change and it would take exactly the right amount of time in equal intervals. Every hour it would sweep out the same angle and that would be a dead good way of telling the time using that shadow. The problem is that we don't live at the North Pole, or at least I don't, uh, and also the Earth's axis is tilted. Now, we don't live at the North Pole. Our latitude isn't 90 degrees. In fact, most of my class live in Stockton and their latitude is 55 degrees. So they live 55 degrees above the equator and that has an effect. Uh, and also because the Earth's axis is tilted, that has an effect as well. So what happens as a result is that the, the length of the shadows changes a lot throughout the day and the angles aren't the same. Okay, Around midday, all the shadows are much, much closer together. Around the beginning of the day and later in the day, the angles are much, much bigger. They're further apart. Okay, So there are two things that you should do. The first thing that you should do is make sure that the gnomon now, the gnomon is the thing that makes the shadow. On a sundial, the gnomon makes the shadow. And what you do is you make it so that the gnomon is pointing true north. Yeah, you make it so that the gnomon is pointing true north. Now, not magnetic north, not north according to a compass. A compass tells you magnetic north. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in true north and true north is in the direction of Polaris. Polaris is the star which is above the North Pole. Okay and that is true north. So what you do is you have your gnomon pointing at Polaris and to have gnomon, your gnomon pointing at Polaris it needs to be pointing north and the angle of the gnomon has to be equal to your latitude. So your gnomon needs to be pointing north and the angle of the gnomon, if you live in Stockton, should be 55 degrees. Okay? 
How do you make sure that the gnomon is pointing true north? Now, there's different ways you can find true north. You could use a phone app. You could use Google Maps. What you could do is find Polaris in the sky. The best way of finding Polaris is you use Ursa Major. You use the two pointer stars in Ursa Major, yes, or the plow, we call it. And those two stars will point to Polaris. And it's a very, very useful way of finding north. OK, uh, as I said, important, a compass will tell you magnetic north, not true north. We don't use a compass. And the gnomon should be at an angle equal to your latitude. And if you live in Stockton, that's 55 degrees. Next, uh, the plate, the template that you use for your sundial. If you're using a, a, a plate which is either vertical or horizontal, then what you need to do is to get a computer to work out where all the intervals are, to work out where 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock is. And there's loads of programs that can do it for you. I mean, if you're dead clever, you can do it on a calculator as well. But the sundial plate should be worked out uh, so that it matches your latitude. Like this sundial plate here is for 55 degrees north. So if you use this template here, if you live at 55 degrees north, then it will be accurate. Uh, but this, as I said, this depends on your latitude. If you don't live at 55 degrees north, then you use your own template. Don't use this one. OK, so the intervals, the angles will depend on your latitude if you want the sundial to, to be accurate. The sundial is almost correctly set up. The markings on the plate, we worked out the markings on the plate using a computer program. Uh, we've got our gnomon. Our gnomon is pointing true north because we're, we're using Polaris to find out where true north is. And the angle of the gnomon is 55 degrees, which is our latitude in Stockton. Now, will the sundial tell us the same time as our clocks, which is GMT, Greenwich Mean Time? Now, not quite, and there are two reasons why it won't be wonderfully accurate. The first one is now Greenwich Mean Time. The thing is, in, in Stockton, we don't live in Greenwich. We live in Stockton. OK, and the time, according to the sun, the time in Greenwich is different to the time in Stockton. And the difference between them is about five minutes. Uh, and that's basically because our longitude, our longitude is about 1.3 degrees west. And because we are 1.3 degrees west of Greenwich, then our sundial will be about five minutes behind London. If you had two people with sundials, one living in Greenwich and one living in Stockton, the, the sundial in Stockton would be about five minutes behind. OK, uh, so you should take that into account. OK, you should correct for longitude. The second reason is because, and this is a little bit complicated, and in, in your report, I don't need loads and loads about this, but the, the length of a day actually varies throughout the year. And it's because the Earth's axis is tilted, it's because the Earth going round the sun goes round in an ellipse. But, but basically, when we say Greenwich Mean Time, that's the average time. The length of a day actually varies quite a bit, OK? It's something called the equation of time. And if you want a really, really accurate sundial, you need to take this into account. It's starting to get a little bit complicated now, and I'm not too worried about this, but at least mention it. Mention that the length of a day varies a little bit, OK, from day to day. And when we talk about Greenwich Mean Time, that's the average time. The, an average day is 24 hours long. Some days are actually longer and some days are actually shorter. OK, we use the average length of a day and the average length of a solar day is 24 hours. So your task, uh, I'm going to ask my class, make a horizontal plate sundial. Uh, I've given my class a template, 
so that they can do it. If you're not in my class, then find a computer program on the internet. It'll, there's loads and it'll do it for you. Find True North in your garden and mark its position somehow. Uh, and then what I want you to do is to test your sundial. So about 10 different readings on the same day, make a note of GMT and make a note of what your sundial says and put it in a table. If you're doing it in the summer, then you need to take an hour away because your clock doesn't say GMT, it says BST, British Summertime. So if you're doing it in the summer, uh, I want to know GMT, not BST. So you need to take an hour off. Uh, put your results in a table. Uh, include an estimate of the uncertainty, like your sundial. Is it saying 10 o'clock plus or minus 10 minutes? Make a note of the uncertainty. And then I'd like you to write a report. And in your report, I want an explanation of how sundials work. I want the details of your experiment, how you set up the sundial and what readings you took and how many readings you took. I want your results in a, in a good table. And I want an analysis and evaluation of your experiment. Okay. Evaluation. What should be in your evaluation? This should be in your evaluation. How close your sundial readings are to GMT? How could you have reduced the uncertainty? How could you get more accurate readings? How could you reduce the uncertainty? Uh, how else could you have got more accurate and reliable results? Explain why your results are different to GMT. And if you were doing the experiment again, what would you change and why? This, what it says on this slide here is very much, you know, do a good job of this if you want a distinction. Okay, this is good stuff.